Now, there was an agreement made with the people in a city north of there called Medina. And they made an arrangement with those people to migrate to Medina. This was called Hijra. And our calendar today, is Muslim calendar, is based on that migration on that time. And that's the year of Hijra. And that's the first year for us. So what our Hijra calendar is based on, if you know it's like, say, 1429, then that was 1,429 lunar years ago that they made this Hijra to leave from that valley and go to what was at that time called Yathrib. And after they went there, it was renamed Medina. You may be wondering why I'm telling you all these details and what it has to do with it. It has everything to do with our subject. Because it wasn't until after they came to Medina and after they were paired up with the Ansar or the helpers in Medina and it wasn't until after they had a chance to start building their community and make alliances and agreements with the tribes that were there. There were pagan tribes, the Ansar, which accepted Islam, and Jewish tribes. And they were working to put all of them together to be one big happy family, meaning their society would be one unit and they would be protected. And it was very important for this because they knew that the Meccans would come up eventually and try to drive them out again. And while they're there, we'd probably take their property too. So the Ansar had agreed there was a treaty, a treaty of Aqaba. You've probably heard about it. This treaty ensured the Muslims by going there that they would all join together and nobody would let them just come and grab them and take them out. But they still didn't have any order for fighting. Still didn't come yet. Now an order came in the Quran for Salat. They established their Salat, which is to pray. An order came in the Quran for them to do Hajj. Hajj is actually, and most of you know this, not something made up by Muhammad whatsoever. Because the people were already doing Hajj, the pagans were doing their own Hajj at that time. They had their own Hajj going on. But it was full of pagan rituals, including people taking all their clothes off and worshiping idols and statues of all kinds. They had 360 different idols scattered around inside there like a temple instead of the harem as it's supposed to be. But the Hajj itself dates all the way back to the time of Abraham. It was Abraham and his son Ishmael who actually initiated and started the whole thing that we know today as Hajj. Now we come to the verse and understand what this means. Because this came in conjunction with something that had just happened. The year before, the Muslims had gone all the way to Medina, uh, from Medina to Mecca. Now, for you and I today, that's an hour and a half flight in an airplane. No big deal. Over the desert. But for them at that time, they didn't have airplanes yet. In fact, they didn't have any cars. They didn't have any trucks. Did they? No. In fact, they didn't even have television. They had to operate their computers by candlelight. It was hard. It really was hard. I said I wasn't going to do any jokes, but I see you sitting there going, I thought I was going to hear a joke. Okay, there you go. That's how you get it. But seriously, they had gone all the way for hearts. Now, Muslims know that men, not the ladies, but the men, when they go for hajj, they have to put on a certain dress. Actually, we're mostly taking off our dress, aren't we? All we got is two towels. How many of you made hajj? How many want to make hajj? I'll make dua for you. All the ones that raise their hand, Allah give them hajj. I mean, don't you wish to raise your hand now? When they got there, they walked all that way, wearing two towels. 
This was not an, an overnight trip. This was weeks. They were walking and walking and walking and walking. And when they got there, they were turned back with military force against them. And all, it was clear. A guy comes to you in two towels. You know what? Even with the high security, we got in airports these days. They let you go through with that. Like, hey, go ahead. They wouldn't let them come in and just go around the Kaaba, go between Safa and Mawa, do to Raqqa and go out to Mina and then to Arafat. They wouldn't let them do any of it. Wouldn't let them in the city of Mecca. They couldn't go in. They were turned back. They were so disappointed. And then when the Prophet, peace be upon him, made an agreement with the Meccans that they would go back, no problem, they'll go back and come back next year. And in the agreement, there were some other things that went down too, like give us back uh, all the people that ran away with you. Even though they went to Islam, we don't accept that. We want them back. We want back these young people. We want back the servants. We want back uh, all those people. They took and, and enslaved people. Took them back. The prophet agreed to it. It's upset the Muslims quite a bit. And then he ordered them, just go ahead and slaughter your animals. You know, let's cook them up, eat them, whatever, give them to the poor, but let's slaughter the animals, cut your hair, and our, we're not going to get to do the Hajj. They were so upset. They didn't do it. Now, that frustrated the prophet, peace be upon him. He went into his tent, and he told his wife, do you see that? They didn't listen to me. Remember, this is what happened to Moses, too. His people didn't listen to him. Remember how upset he got. She said, well, why don't you go do it first? Let them see you do it. So he went out, slaughtered the animal, cut his hair. Then they all did it. They went back. 